are going to solve a numerical example just to explain the working principle of this particular the end phase. Now, here I am just going to take one uh, example numerical example for a system. It is a very simple system having two inputs and one output. So, this is something like this we have got I 1, I 2 and I have got only one output. Now, the statement of this particular the numerical example is as follows. So, we will have to model uh, we will have to design one end phase and the purpose is to model a process having two inputs I 1 and I 2 and one output that is O. Now, in this particular end phase there are six layers and we use two linguistic term to represent each of the input parameters for simplicity. For example, say to represent I 1. So, we have used like uh, your low and your high. Similarly, to represent this I 2 the second input parameters. So, we have used two linguistic term one is called the small another is your the large. So, this is a very simple uh, the end piece and the two inputs each of the two inputs uh, uh, is represented using two linguistic term. So, we have got like 2 multiplied by 2. So, only 4 possible rules and we can see that. So, this shows actually the second layer. Now, in the second layer in fact, we have got uh, 2 neurons here and you have got 2 more neurons here and the connecting weights between your the first layer and the this particular neuron of the second layer. So, this is nothing but is your V 1 1, this is your V 1 2 and here the connecting weight is V 2 3 and this is your V 2 4 and is a very simple network. Now, let us see the other part of the statement of this particular problem. The connecting weights are lying in the, the range of 0 to 1 and uh, if you see the membership function distribution which you have considered for the two inputs like I 1 and I 2 are as follows. Now, for simplicity we have considered like the low I 1 is nothing but this. So, this type of membership function distribution right angle triangle and for the high another right angle triangle and there is overlapping also. Now, similarly for this I 2 there are two linguistic term one is the small another is the large and for simplicity we have considered. So, this type of your your right angle triangle. It is a very simple representation of the your the, the membership function and here the starting value of this particular I 1 and I 2. Now, you can see that the starting value is nothing but I 1 minimum and here it is I 2 minimum. So, this I 1 minimum we have considered that is equals to 1.0 and your I 2 minimum we have considered that this is equals to your the 5.0. Now, the rest of the statement of this particular problem like we use the connecting words like V 1 1 is equals to V 1 2 and that is denoted by is your the D 1. Similarly, your so this particular V 2 3 is nothing but is your V 2 4 and that is going to represent actually your D 2. Now, these values for the D 1 and D 2 should lie in a particular the range and there should be some well defined range also. And as I told there are four linguist four possible rules 2 multiplied by 2 and the output of a particular rule that is the the output of the ith rule that is y i is nothing but a i i 1 plus b i i 2 plus c i. And here, so this particular i is nothing but 1, 2, 3, 4 and a i b i c i are the, the coefficients of these particular the rules. Now, here to solve this numerical example, so we are going to consider some numerical values the predetermined numerical values for this particular the coefficient. The values of the coefficients are as follows. 
Now, for the first rule, the coefficient, the values of the coefficients are nothing but a i that is a 1 equals to 0 0.2, b 1 equals to 0 0.3 and c 1 is 0 0.10. Similarly, for the second rule, a 2 is 0 0.2 and this b 2 is 0 0.4 and c 2 is 0 0.11. Similarly, for the third rule, your a 3 is 0 0.3 b 3 is 0 0.3 and c 3 is 0 0.13 and for the fourth rule your a 4 is 0 0.3 then b 4 is 0 0.4 and c 4 is 0 0.14. Now, this d 1 and d 2. So, they are varying in this particular range. So, d 1 is varying in the range of 0 0.8 to 1.5. Now, similarly, d 2 is going to vary in the range of 4.0 to 6.0. And to carry out this numerical example actually what it do is we assume some the values for the connecting weights. We assume that v 1 1 equals to v 1 2 which is going to represent the membership function distribution for the, the first input that is nothing but 0 0.3. Similarly, v 2 3 equals to v 2 4 this is nothing but 0 0.5 and these are in the normalized scale. So, uh, we will be discussing that using this normalized values. So, we will have to find out the real values lying in the range for this particular d 1 and d 2. And we are going to determine what is the deviation in prediction for e particular training scenario, where i 1 the first input is nothing but 1.0 and i 2 that is the second input is 6.0 and the output o is nothing but is your 2.3. Now, let us see how to determine the output corresponding to. So, these set of inputs and how to determine the deviation in prediction corresponding to this particular your the training scenario. So, those things actually I am just going to calculate. Now, let us concentrate on the this on the solution of this numerical example. Now, as I told the first thing we will have to do is corresponding to the normalized values of the connecting weights. So, we will have to find out the real values that means, we will have to find out the real values for this particular d 1 and d 2. Now, to find out the real values from the normalized value that is denoted by n, we are going to use this particular the formula. It is very simple like x is equals to n multiplied by x max minus x minimum plus x minimum. Now, if I put n equals to 0, so, if I put n is equals to 0, so x will become equals to how much that is nothing but x minimum. On the other hand, if I put n is equals to 1, what will happen to the value of x? So, if I put n equals to 1, so this is x max minus x minimum plus x minimum. So, this will become your x maximum. That means, so, here so this particular n varies in the range of 0 to 1 and accordingly I can find out what should be the real values for d 1 and d 2 lying within their respective ranges. Now, here so d 1 is nothing but your 0 0.3 multiplied by 1.5 minus 0 0.8 plus 0 0.8 because n is equals to 0 0.3 the maximum value of d is 1.5, the minimum value is 0 0.8 and if you calculate, we will be getting that d 1 is equals to 1.01. Now, similarly, we can find out d 2 is equals to 0 0.5 that is the value of n multiplied by 6.0 minus 4.0 plus 4.0. Now, here the d 2 minimum is 4.0 d 2 maximum is 6.0 and value of small n is equals to 0 0.5 and if you substitute you will be getting uh, the, the value for this d 2 as 5.0. Now, once you have got 
the real values for this particular d 1 and d 2. So, now we are in a position to draw the modified membership function distribution for this particular i 1 and i 2. So, for this particular i 1, so this is the modified membership function distribution and for this i 2, so this is the modified membership function distribution where d 1 is nothing but this and d 2 is nothing but is your uh, this. So, we can find out the modified membership function distribution for the two inputs. And now, uh, the layer wise, I am just going to carry out the calculations. Uh, now, on the first layer, as I mentioned that we use linear transfer function. So, this output is nothing but the input. So, the output of the first neuron lying on the first layer is nothing but the input of the first neuron lying on the first layer and that is nothing but 1.1. Now, similarly, the output of the second neuron lying on the first layer is same as the input of the second neuron lying on the first layer and that is nothing but 6.0. Now, layer 2 is nothing but the fuzzification layer. So, what you do is, so these values for your the input that is 1.1 and 6.0, we are going to pass to the corresponding the membership function distribution just to calculate what should be the membership function values. Now, if you calculate the membership function values, so you will be getting that your corresponding to uh, the low i 1. So, the mu low corresponding to i 1 star. So, this will become equal to your 0 0.900990. Then corresponding to your i 1 star, the mu h will become 0 0.09009. Similarly, corresponding to the second input that is equals to 6.0. So, we can find out the mu values like mu s m corresponding to i 2 star is nothing but 0 0.8 then comes your mu large corresponding to i 2 star is nothing but is your 0 0.2. And how to determine those things we have discussed several times in details. Now, then comes your layer 3. Now, this layer 3 is actually is going to represent all the four possible rules for this particular the reasoning tool. And here you can see that the input of the first neuron lying on the third layer is nothing but the two values of the membership. Similarly, the input of the second neuron lying on the third layer are nothing but the two values of the membership. Then your the input of third neuron lying on the third layer is nothing but this. Then the input of the fourth neuron lying on third layer is nothing but this. And what you will have to do is now, to determine the output of third layer, so we will have to multiply your the mu values. For example, say output of the first neuron lying on the third layer is nothing but mu low corresponding to i 1 star multiplied by your mu s m corresponding to this i 2 star. And if you substitute the numerical values and multiply, so you will be getting w 1 as actually your the firing strength for the first fired rule. Now, by following the same procedure, so we can find out the, the firing strength of the other fired rules. For example, for the second rule, the firing strength we can find out and this will become 0 0.180198 as w 2. And similarly, we can find out the firing strength of the third rule that is your w 3 and that is nothing but is your 0 0.079207. For the fourth rule, so we can also find out the firing strength and that is nothing but mu h corresponding to i 1 star multiplied by mu l r corresponding to i 2 star. And if you substitute the numerical values and carry out the multiplication, so, you will be getting w 4 is nothing but 0 
9802. And once you have determined all the firing strength values, now we can start with layer 4. And in layer 4, actually, we try to find out the normalized values of this particular the firing strength. Now, here, so W1 bar that is the normalized value for the first uh, the fired rule that is nothing but W1 divided by W1 plus W2 plus W3 plus W4 and if you substitute all the numerical values. So, you will be getting W1 bar as 0 0.720792. Similarly, this W2 bar is nothing but is your W2 divided by the sum of all W values and if you substitute the numerical values, you will be getting W 2 bar is nothing but 0 0.0 0 0.180198. Now, by following the, the same procedure, so we can also find out like what should be your W 3 bar and W 3 bar is nothing but W 3 divided by the sum of all the W values and you will be getting 0 0.079207 as your W 3 bar. Similarly, W 4 bar is nothing but W 4 divided by the sum of all W values and after substituting the, the numerical values, we can calculate the W 4 bar is nothing but 0 0.019802. Now, we have got all the normalized firing strength values. Now, we go to layer 5. Now, in layer 5 actually what we will have to do is, so we will have to find out the output of each of these particular the fired rule. For example, for the first fired rule, so this W 1 is nothing but A 1 I 1 star plus B 1 I 2 star plus C 1. So, you will be getting 2.12. Similarly, this y 2 is nothing but a 2 i 1 star plus b 2 i 2 star plus c 2 and this will become equal to 2.73. Then y 3 is nothing but a 3 i 1 star plus b 3 i 2 star plus c 3 and if you substitute the numerical values, you will be getting 2.26. Then y 4 is nothing but a 4 i 1 star plus B 4 I 2 star plus C 4. So, if you substitute all the numerical values, you will be getting 2.87 as your Y 4. Now, once you have completed your the layer 5. So, uh, layer 5 actually we will be getting we multiply. So, this W 1 bar by your Y 1 and we will be getting this as the output of the first neuron lying on the, the fifth layer. Similarly, the output of the second neuron lying on the fifth layer is nothing but W 2 bar multiplied by Y 2 and it will be getting 0 0.491941. Similarly, the output of the third neuron lying on the fifth layer is nothing but W 3 bar multiplied by Y 3 and that is nothing but 0 0.179008. And similarly, your the output of the fourth neuron lying on the fifth layer is nothing but W 4 bar Y 4 and if you substitute the numerical values, you will be getting 0 0.056832. And once you have got the outputs of the fifth layer, now uh, in sixth layer, uh, actually, what we do is we sum them up just to find out what is the overall output that is your 6 O 1. So, 6 O 1 is nothing but W 1 bar Y 1 plus W 2 bar Y 2 plus W 3 bar Y 3 plus W 4 bar Y 4 and if you substitute the, the numerical values, you will be getting 2.255860. And this is nothing but the final calculated output for the set of inputs. 
Now, this calculated output will be compared with this particular target output and that is denoted by T O 1 that is 2.3 and very easily we can find out the deviation in prediction and we can also find out the mod value of the deviation in prediction that is 2.3 minus 255860. Now, here fortunately we are getting positive, but if we get negative, so we will have to consider the mod value and the way I discussed. So, this is the prediction corresponding to your the first training scenario, then we go for the second training scenario, third training scenario up to all the training scenario. So, capital Lth training scenario and try to find out all the deviation values. You add the mod values of all the deviations, find out the average, that particular average will be the fitness of the GA as I discussed. Now, if I use the GA string and if I use a binary coded GA, say if I use a binary coded GA for each of the GA string, I will be able to find out the fitness and then we use actually your the operators, the G A operators just to modify and G A through a large number of iterations, we try to evolve that particular N piece like which will ensure a very good prediction accuracy. Now, this is the way actually this N piece works and uh, now regarding the, the reference. Uh, you can see the textbook for this particular course that is soft computing fundamentals and applications. Uh, if you want to get more details regarding this the neurophagy systems. Uh, now, to conclude actually uh, in this lecture we discussed uh, two neurophagy systems. The first one is based on the Mamdani approach and the second one is based on the Takagi and Sugena's approach. Now, the basic uh, the aim of this particular the neurophagy system is to design and develop the fuzzy reasoning tool and we take the structure of this particular network. So, that we can represent the fuzzy reasoning tool and we can carry out the training or the optimization of this particular network. But truly speaking, we are going to design and develop very accurate fuzzy reasoning tool and we have discussed both Mamdani approach and Takagi and Sugena's approach of fuzzy reasoning tool and we have seen how to represent them using the structure of a network and how to optimize. So, how to evolve the optimal fuzzy reasoning tool based on both Mamdani approach as well as Takagi and Sogenage approach by taking the help of the structure of a network, neural network and with the help of one optimization tool. Now, so this is the way actually we can develop the neurophagy system and these neurophagy systems have got a large number of practical applications. So, these neurophagy systems have been used widely to solve a variety of real world problems. Uh, thank you.